Every time I read the 34th chapter of Matthew, which is part of today's gospel for the first Sunday of Advent, I am struck by this verse. Two men will be out in the field. One will be taken and one will be left behind. Two women will be grinding at the mill. One will be taken and one will be left behind. Now, the idea here is obvious that we are to be ready because we do not know the day nor the hour of Christ's second coming. But how are we to be ready? How do we get ourselves ready? Well, the first two readings give us insights into this. Isaiah says, Nations shall beat their swords into plowshares and their spears into pruning hooks. They shall wage war no more. No more war. There will be peace, justice, and mercy. St. Paul uses different pictures, but essentially says the same thing. Paul says, Put on the armor of light, not warrior uh, battles, but the armor of light. And he says, he goes on to say, put on the Lord Jesus Christ. And what did Christ do? Christ showed us how to live by works of peace, justice, and mercy. But um, let me go back to those two words of like two men and two women, and probably I focused on them because of my lifelong ministry on behalf of LGBT people. I recently returned from Poland, which is the land of my heritage, my grandparents, but I wasn't um, too happy. I was kind of saddened because I didn't see um, some peace, justice, and mercy that I had hoped to see on behalf of LGBT people. For example, the Archbishop of Krakow, in a homily, spoke of Poland being rid of the Red Menace, but he said now that Poland was being invaded by the uh, Rainbow Menace. Well, that's not peace, justice, and mercy talk. In another diocese, another bishop commended an author who had written an article calling LGBT people, traveling rapists. Again, this is not the language of peace, justice, or mercy. And in another diocese, there was a march on behalf of equality for LGBT people. And prior to the march, the bishop uh, called the march an act of discrimination against Catholics. Well, the march had nothing to do with Catholics. It had to do with equality for LGBT people. So this kind of saddened me, of course. But then you might ask, well, um, do I have any hope? Isn't Advent supposed to be uh, a time of hope? Uh, where is my hope when I see things like this for the people that I've been working for during my lifetime? Well, I have to say I do have hope. I have lots of hope, um, not only for LGBT people, but for the whole church. But I'd like to share just three points of hope with you. Um, first um, is about marches, those equality marches that I saw in, in Poland. Well, we have them all over the world, and that gives me great hope. Uh, initially, they had started in the U.S. decades ago, but the uh, awareness has grown uh, across the globe so that in countries throughout the world, there are uh, equality marches, pride parades. And this is a, a great source of hope. In fact, here in the States, many parishes will march, parishioners will use their parish banners in the march. And that's very heartening to see. Um, a second uh, hope for me uh, comes from the parents that I have been working with over the years. A number of decades ago, parents would come to me and say, oh, why isn't my gay son or my lesbian daughter going to church anymore? I feel so sad about this. What can I do? But now, uh, several decades later, they're saying, why doesn't the church accept my gay son or my lesbian daughter? I want the same happiness for them as for my heterosexual children. Uh, so there's been a, a, an awareness, a growth 
that LGBT people are just uh, just like everyone else, except for their sexual identity or their gender identity. So um, we're all human beings. And my third point of hope that gives me great hope is Pope Francis. He gives hope not just for LGBT people, but for the whole church. He is calling us to work as a community, calling us to what the Second Vatican Council uh, told us that we were, the people of God. He's asking us to come together in synods, just as he's having synods or meetings with the bishops. He's encouraging dioceses to have synods so that the bishop will come together with um, not only his advisors, but uh, just people, ordinary people in the parish, people who maybe are not part of a parish, but have grown up Catholic, but they say they don't go to church anymore. Well, come, come and, and discuss. Let's all pray together. Let's express our views. Let's set a direction for the future that will lead us to this second coming, that will lead us to work for peace, justice, and mercy. So, Many things give me hope this Advent. I really believe that we, as a human family, are marching, maybe slowly, but we're still marching toward this second coming of Christ by engaging in works of peace, justice, and mercy. <laughs>